Back in November of 2022, I decided to switch to Radeon after using NVIDIA for 10 years. I made a couple of videos sharing my experience with AMD graphics cards, which you can watch up here. And for the last year, I've been rocking the RX 6800. This is my second ever AMD GPU that I got for myself to get familiar with Radeon graphics cards. And in today's revisit, I thought we would finally have a look at its performance. The RX 6800 came out back in late 2020. It has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with a 256-bit memory bus and 3840 shading units. You can currently find this card in the range of $320 to $330 used, although you can still get it brand new for $370 on Amazon. I will leave a link down below. So I would say paying $40 to $50 extra makes more sense here. Specs wise, we have a Ryzen 5 5600 with a 4.525 gigahertz overclock, an MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard, 32GB of DDR4 3200 mega transfer memory, and a 700 watt power supply. As usual, we're using the latest drivers at the time of testing. The power limit has been maxed out in MSI Afterburner. Smart access memory has been enabled in the Adrenaline software, and the Windows power plan has been set to ultimate performance. Keep in mind that the R5 5600, even with an overclock, can bottleneck the RX 6800 in some titles, which I will mention as we go through them, though these results will still give us a baseline and an idea how this card is going to perform in case you have a CPU better or worse compared to the overclocked 5600. Let's begin with titles where the RX 6800 is least bottlenecked. And first up, we have Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which the RX 6800 handles quite well at 1440p using the high preset. Depending on the area and the intensity of the situation, there are moments where the frame rate can drop to 50 FPS, though generally it hovers in the range of 55 to 70 frames. The frame time spikes are unfortunately inevitable in this title. This game simply isn't very well optimized and stutters on all sorts of hardware, yet thankfully the stuttering isn't frequent enough to make the game unplayable. You got me back on my feet. Sounds like a good teacher to me. Stormtrooper patrol. We got a fight ahead, Cal. God of War is yet another title where our GPU is fully utilized at 1440p using the Ultra preset. The frame rate mainly stays in the range of 70s to 90s, with extremely rare drops to low 60s. Unsurprisingly, the RX 6800 has no issues running Forza Horizon 5 using the Extreme preset at 1440p. This is one of the easiest games to run that we have on our list, and we're able to stay above 100 frames 99% of the time. Cyberpunk 2077 runs really well at 1440p high with medium crowd density. Generally, the frame rate hovers between mid 60s to high 70s, with the GPU being basically fully utilized. Sure, the usage does drop by a few percent in some areas, though it is so insignificant it's not even worth talking about it. Enabling ray tracing results in a massive impact on performance at 1440p, though once we drop the resolution to 1080p, the frame rate increases by about 50%. So you might want to play around with upscaling 
and frame generation to achieve a playable experience with ray tracing at 1440p. Dying Light 2 runs great using the high preset at 1440p. The frame rate mainly jumps between 65 to 85 FPS, and as we can see by the GPU utilization, it can drop to about 95% every once in a while, though once again this is an extremely light CPU bottleneck. This graphics card is also capable of delivering a pretty playable experience with the ray tracing preset at 1440p, although if you want to switch to high quality ray tracing, you're either going to need to lower the resolution, try upscaling, or frame generation since the frame rate drop is quite significant. Apex Legends runs extremely well at 1440p with basically everything maxed out. The frame rate mostly hovers well above 150 FPS, with rare drops down to 100 frames in detailed areas or under intense scenarios. And the only reason it drops that low is, you guessed it, because of our CPU. If we check the GPU utilization every time the frame rate drops below 150s, we can see that the usage can go as low as 80% in these areas, so something like a 5800X3D or better will help unlock the full potential of this graphics card in these situations. Alright, so now we have titles where the RX 6800 just has to be paired with a faster processor. First up, let's have a look at Warzone 2 at 1440p Ultra, which runs quite well with the frame rate mostly ranging between 90 to 110 FPS, with some stuttering here and there, although so far this is one of the least stuttery results that I've got in this game compared to some other cards that I've tested. Now, once we shift our attention to the GPU usage, we can see that our RX 6800 is rarely fully utilized. It constantly jumps from 80 to 99% depending on what's going on. So once again, with something like a 5800X3D, performance is definitely going to be higher. Switching to the lowest preset not only eliminates a big chunk of frame time spikes, which this game likes to exhibit at higher presets, but the frame rate also gets an increase and now hovers mainly between 110 to 130 frames per second, making the game much more playable. The GPU utilization in Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered mostly stays in the high 90s, although there are a few CPU intensive areas that result in the GPU usage dropping as low as 66%. The game is still very playable though with the frame rate hovering well above 80s, even with ray tracing I rarely saw the frame rate dip below 60s, yet again to unlock the full potential of this graphics card you need to pair it with a more powerful CPU. For our final game where we're CPU bound the most, we have Hogwarts Legacy, and while the game doesn't run too bad using the high preset at 1440p, our Ryzen 5 5600 has a hard time delivering a stable frame time and getting the RX 6800 fully utilized in detailed areas like Hogsmeade, so you definitely want a faster processor here. Switching to the lowest preset eliminates the vast majority of stuttering, making the gameplay experience much more fluid.
Due to its size and efficiency, this Merc 319 RX 6800 from XFX is an extremely cool card. Even with the fan speed set to 50%, and a room temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, the GPU and hotspot temps never exceed 56 and 68 degrees Celsius respectively. It is a similar story with power consumption, the whole build doesn't exceed 400 watts in Cyberpunk at 1440p, so you want to have at least a 550 watt power supply here. Personally, I think the RX 6800 is a great GPU. It's relatively efficient, runs cool, and performs quite well. However, I really wish it was cheaper, both new and used. You can currently get yourself a brand new 7700 XT from PowerColor for $350, and while by going with it you do lose 4GB of VRAM, according to reviews online, Performance-wise, they're identical with the RX 6800, not to mention the improved productivity and ray tracing performance of 7000 series. So, unless you really need 16GB of memory for some reason, the 7700 XT makes more sense. In case you care more about video editing, 3D rendering, and streaming and want a brand new card, there is also the 8GB RTX 4060 Ti at just under $400. Although do keep in mind that it is a worse gaming GPU compared to the 7700 XT. When it comes to the used market, you can get yourself an 8GB 3070 Ti on eBay for just a little over $300, and while the RX 6800 and the 3070 Ti trade blows in rasterized gaming, with ray tracing enabled and in productivity tasks, the 3070 Ti is superior, so it's really hard for me to recommend the RX 6800 at these prices. So. To recap, if your main goal is gaming with or without ray tracing, go for the 7700 XT. If you care about productivity and won't be playing as much, the 8GB RTX 4060 Ti is a solid card. And finally, if you're okay with buying used and want the best of both worlds, the RTX 3070 Ti at just a little over $300 is a great deal. I will leave a link for every single GPU mentioned here in the description down below. Anyways, that's been it. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next one.